Well, welcome back. I still have with me here in the studio General Paul Burrow, who is the special advisor to the president on Niger Delta matters. Well, General, you were telling us about how the federal government is, you know, is going ahead with the dialogue. They want to have a dialogue, and you were saying that they're identifying groups that they want to dialogue with. Uh, but people will also ask, you know, whether or not you you, you talked about thirty thousand militants uh, that you have the, the responsibility of integrating into the program. What exactly will be the stance of the government? You know, with these militants, are they going to? Is there going to be another amnesty program, or is it going to be extended? Thank you. Amnesty program worldwide have a limit because um, it's a masterpiece strategy to resolving militancy. So when that of Nigeria was established in 2009, it was supposed to have existed. But when I took over the reins of power uh, towards the end of July last year, I had an overview of the program. And I felt if, if it was to stop abruptly, that would have created more problems. Because the amnesty program in Nigeria, candidly speaking, helps greatly in stabilizing the region. There are well over 4,000 beneficiaries of the amnesty program. Well over 4,000. We have close to 3,700 beneficiaries of this program schooling out of this country in all contingents. As we speak? As we speak. That's How many of them have graduated? Okay, now, uh, let me give you the facts and figures. As we speak, 13,031 delegates have been successfully trained in various fields in the program. 1,246 are apparently undergoing vocational training, in, in, in the, in both onshore and offshore. And then 159 delegates are having advanced training in maritime operations. 3,796 delegates are in various universities, both on and offshore. So why do we have new agitations? Because it would seem that you, you talk about over 13,000 people who have, been, who have benefited from this program yes. and about 4,000 more who are currently in training. You say you have a list of 30,000 which whom you still hope to take on in the program. Why do you have this uh, new outburst of you know, vengeance, it would seem, in the Niger Delta? Sorry, let me correct uh, the, 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 what the statement you just made. Uh, 13,000 ex-agitators are captured in the program, mm -hmm. not people that I intend to bring into the program. No, no, no. Well, how, how many people do you intend to? Because I thought I had I do not intend to bring in one more than into the program. Okay. I do not intend to, because that's not my mandate. Mm -hmm. My mandate is to uh, reintegrate 30,000 ex-agitators into the program. 30,000? 30, there are 30,000 of them mm -hmm. that are already in the program. Okay. Yes, ex-agitators. But this number is bloated because the communities that are affected due to the conflict, the government is also taking care of them. That's why we talk about this group that are schooling out of the country and some within the country. That's why it's well over 13,000. 13,000 ex-agitators, yes, captured in the program. Mm -hmm. They undergo skills acquisition and training, mm -hmm. which is ongoing. Then the, the balanced caseload of those that are training in various institutions out of this country are those that are uh, in from the impacted communities uh, due to the conflicts. So okay, help me understand how then we arrive at 30,000. Uh, the 30,000 are those that gave up their arms during the period of uh, the amnesty proclamation. It was in three phases. We had phase one, phase two, and phase three. Mm -hmm. That totaling in 30,000. Okay. And when the program started in 2009, I expected some of this group being exited as the undergo training. But when I took over the office, I still met the caseload of 30,000. You understand what I'm saying? And, my, and I came up with an exit strategy whereby every quarter, 5,000 thereabout as exigencies would be exiting the program. Okay. So I have that program, I have that uh, exit plan uh, to, to, to exit the 30,000 exaggerated, as well as those that are graduating from the universities. I have a booklet of well over 400 uh, delegates that were graduated from the university this year. The balance will be graduating, most of them will graduate next year. And uh, it will be a success story of the, of the amnesty program.
I think for a lot of people, they will want to know what exactly, what, what impact. You say that it's, it's helped stabilize the region yes, in many areas. Well, a lot of people thought that, you know, we would see the end of bombings in, in the Niger Delta, but that has not been the case. Why do you think that we're beginning to see these renewed attacks? Yes, thank you. These renewed attacks is not by the ex-agitators that are captured in my program. Mm. There are a new set of people who feel aggrieved, as to what is happening in the country and the, the best way they vent their anger is on pipeline. I am saying that is not the best way to vent your anger. If, there are, if your issues have to be resolved through uh, legal process, then employ lawyers to take it up. If it has to be through administration, then let it be handled administratively, but not venting angers on pipelines. Does the government that affects, know who, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. the, does the government know who the Niger Delta Avengers are? Well, the government uh, for now has uh, established dialogue team to dialogue with them so that they can come out and resolve this amicably. So that process is ongoing and it should be done with all amount of sincerity and not blaming the government or blaming individuals. No, we are talking of resolution of a conflict and a very important conflict that affects the economy of the country. The economy is a singular factor that affects both Avengers and the government. So the government knows very well the people who call themselves the Niger Delta Avengers, do they? Yes, the government do, and then the dialogue is ongoing. And dialogue has issue, started as we speak? Dialogue is ongoing so that there will be a win-win situation in resolving this conflict. All over the world where conflict exists, peace-building efforts are ongoing in order to allow for peace to prevail. This is our country. Avengers, if they are Nigerians, by now they should mellow down and allow the government and 